I hope you should be able to hear me now. I think the mic was off. Yeah. So I think to start things off, uh, it makes the most sense to tell me a little bit about yourself and where you're joining in from, which city. And the thing is, like in this, we are going to cover a lot of things and it's going to be about studies. It's going to be about jobs, too. So this is going to work out for uh, both of you. Also, we're going to go through the MBA part and how does that work out? Because many people are also interested for MBA. So that thing is also something that I will be um, covering in this one. Right. Um, there is always a lag. So I'm going to stop for a while and I'm going to start seeing the responses because I can see Gautam from Bangalore, Parth, Ludhiana, Ashutosh, Maharashtra. We have some people from Pakistan too. Okay, the voice should not be low. I think like the voice should be fine. Like nobody has ever complained about voice for me. Um, okay, in Kolkata and so on. Perfect. Right, so uh, let me take you through um, what I have um, made for you guys today. Because there are a few things that are also a factor of um, job like age restriction because many people are also not really understanding at what age uh, it's a little bit too late to apply for things abroad so that is something that i also cover and towards the end i will take up your questions whatever kind of questions you would have there so starting off with the webinar i think it's super important to just kind of close all of the other tabs and applications that you have so that we can go through the things that we have right now um, a quick story about myself. So I was born in India and then afterwards I did my um, preschooling um, in Germany for a while. Then I went to the school in India. We had the entire story with the IIT and so on, making the preparation for the exam. Most of the things don't work out for most of the Indians. So that is the same story which happened for me. Like it was not really a huge success um at all in that regard so that was not not such a nice time right like i think i don't think this is a good time for any of the students i'm recently getting actually a lot of comments on one video i made about the 12th grade so the 12th grade students are right now preparing for things and their boards are going on many of them are not performing well and then they're just thinking ki yaar ab to zindagi bilkul khatam hogi what's the point of doing anything at all? So that's exactly the phase I was also in back then. But then afterwards I started my BTEC and so on. Um, started doing my internship afterwards at Schleich Bergamann Partner in Berlin. It was a pretty nice company. Then the third year ended, um, came back. So after the third year, like, you know, the internship happens and afterwards like the BTEC ends. Now, after the BTEC was done, I started my structural engineering in Germany. And this was in 2016 when I already started. And this was a German thought program. Um, then I started YouTube in 2017. And then I had a first meetup where like nobody was there because the channel was too small. And I hosted the meetup in Kurukshetra. No, not in Kurukshetra, in Bhivani. So, of course, it's like it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, change the course. I think this is also a big question that you guys have. Uh, and that is that you are not really understanding what is going to be the story if I should continue the program or, or not, right? Because many of you are also thinking, does it make sense for me to like, you know, jump into a program, even if I do not know if I would like the program or not. And this is something that a lot of people generally ask, because in India, things are very stiff, right? you join a course and you stay in the course and you don't really have the option of like skipping very quickly in germany that's not so dramatic so if you see here i was previously doing structural engineering i didn't like the program i moved to in uh, this international this engineering which is called international management engineering if you go to the tuhh ev website you will be able to read about the program this is i think uh, one of the best programs that you get to study in germany uh, for management and they also then mention different kind of things, what it is about. The best thing about this, bilkul muft mein. The only thing that you generally have to pay is semester uh, by track. And that is around like 320 euros, something like that. But it is not a big amount. So it is not something that you will go broke from. So that's something um, important to know. Uh, many people are saying, 
not many people actually one guy ravi prakash shrivastava hindi please no if i just speak in hindi then we have a lot of people who are also uh, wanting to join from other countries so that's something i cannot really uh, do right now but maybe in a different stream we can do that right so i started big academy around uh, 2019 and that's when i was doing my um finishing my master thesis and at that time i was like okay i think we have a lot of people who could get benefit from living in germany and studying in germany and so on and that's why i started big academy and we got like super successful there this was the end goal for me and that was like you know getting my master certificate with a uh, native fluency in german language and that worked out really really nicely so for the people who are thinking about like studying in germany what are the different kind of ways right the first way if you think about it is you could uh, easily go ahead and you can start with your um, bachelor's this is something that i personally recommend to people who are young and they do not have too many years on their head that means like you can generally settle in the country easier this is something like i can recommend for people who are um thinking about this right now because parents are also thinking okay like it's 12th going on right now should we think about sending our son for um student college um or for bachelor's in germany or not so my personal opinion is that the earlier the better because then you can actually settle in the country very nicely um the later it gets like you generally of course you have more experience on the other end right like you can uh, maybe come a little bit more prepared um but at the same time if you go to germany a little bit early the character development is completely different the way your personality develops it's not com- comparable at all um with how it is um unfortunately in india right so that is something that you have to keep in mind that what kind of different ways you have so of course you have the student college now here m- there are many different ways like you know uh, i cannot really uh, tell you that okay like b1 is going to be the standard requirement everywhere uh, that's not the case b1 is the requirement that we recommend because if you're applying for public student colleges there are going to be public student colleges which will da- directly say yeah we will not take you if you don't have b1 level german proficiency so this is the only reason i mentioned this um with the student college you generally have to write the aufnahme prüfung you have to do one year of uh, studies in germany then afterwards you have a fsp exam and what we recommend is b2 because if you already learn b2 then the part that you have in the student college for learning german is less right think about student college as something like um the iit je coaching that we used to have before the iit je exam because this student college can be done both um privately and via public student college and here's the benefit like it doesn't matter if you do private student college or pub- public student college you are allowed to study in public universities from both of them either it's private or public it doesn't matter right i will just check the screen real quick again if there is no chaos happening right now that would be nice yeah so i i see the comments right now but guys the comments i think makes the most sense for me to take it up like towards then right because otherwise we will not really go further towards then i will uh, sit as long as possible so that i can um go through the questions that you guys have for me right so don't worry about that now we have the next one okay next next um option right next option is after you have done the first year in india or you have cleared the je mains now this is a very important option that you should really um weigh with each other no why do i mean that um why do i say that the reason is that doing student college in germany is also costly right like this is not for free so when you're going to do student college you will have a minimum of like 700 euros per month of cost just to live and having accommodation food and things like that that is going to be there so that's why in some cases it might make sense to have your first year of bachelor's done in india right so that is something that you have to decide if you want to do first year of bachelor's in india or you rather want to get used to the german culture and german environment and want to do the student college in germany itself so that is another option that you can think about now direct application to universities uh, can be done after the first year of bachelor's in india or after clearing the je mains uh, you can apply via universities here uh, no less no or less german knowledge of german is required now this is for the english programs yeah? very important to know but 
if I would just quickly show you, like, I think we can go to Hochschul Compass, one of the websites that I like to use. Then afterwards, if I go to programs and let's say I put informatique or I put computer science or let's say data science, right? Data science. Now, if I see the number of programs on the right side, you'll see 252. I think you're not able to see the screen very nicely, but let me see if I can zoom this out a little bit. At the last moment, I had to like change my streaming software because um, we have renovations going on in the house and like, unfortunately, I'm not able to go to my normal setup. Right now, what, why do I mean German is important? It's very important for everybody to listen right now. The reason German is important is if you go here and take a look at what are the different kind of options that you have available, then you're going to see, all right, like, you know, 252 results. But if I want to now make the search a little bit more refined, no? so from 250, so 355 results right now, if I say, show me the programs for data science in English, right? So we went from 355 that you saw right now, no? You saw 355, from 355 we went to just 100. Take a look at this, right? So how much is 100 of 355, right? It's just 28% programs. So 28% programs in Germany are in English. And this is the reason I tell you guys that, okay, like English, um, you know, German is not required for many of these programs, but the competition is extremely high. The competition has increased. And that's why I mentioned next that these are like, there are lesser courses available for this. And that's why you have to write the IELTS, IELTS exam too, right? After diploma, now it is actually very difficult because you have to apply for the AP, A, uh, APS and so on. So like this isn't recognized by UniAssist. Uh, APS also doesn't allow you to do it. There could be some private university which give you the admission with diploma, but if you don't clear the APS process, you will also not be able to apply for the study visa and so on. So after diploma, it has become difficult. So after diploma, you cannot directly study um, bachelor's in Germany. You still have to do a bachelor's in India or rather like finish your bachelor's in India and then afterwards, you know, do your master's abroad. So after diploma, it has gotten very difficult. It used to be uh, a little bit better. And now I take a look at the screen real quick again. How is everybody doing? Okay, everybody's fine. Can we avoid student colleague by giving test AS? Not in all cases, I So test AS is more like the aptitude test that they want to do. So you can think about it as the GRE equivalent, but like this does not really bypass the um, entire student colleague requirement. This is also very um, important to remember that what requirements are going to be for one university are not going to be the same for the other one. Right. So even if they say, OK, like, you know, you can do test AS and you can directly apply for the bachelor's, you have to see two things after that. The first thing is, is does it also apply for me? Right. Does it apply to me as an as an Indian national? Like, does it work for me or is it just for somebody else? So that is something um, you have to keep in mind because that could be the first criteria. The second criteria could be that. Um, this is not going to be something which applies to every single um, university in Germany. That's the funny thing. In Germany, it's very difficult to make blanket statements uh, which generalize everything because every single university has its own um, criteria. Now, for masters in Germany, of course, you have the German taught programs and the English taught programs. I already showed you what is the huge difference in... Ah, you were not able to see at all. Just a second. I'm going to zoom it out a little bit more so you can see now, right? 101 and the normal was, if you also take like all programs, 355, English is 101. So 28% of the programs generally, um, and in many of them, it's even less. Sometimes it's just like 10% of the programs which are English. So German taught programs are very, very interesting in Germany. I also did a German taught program myself because my scores were not good. My, my bachelor's score was not great. I had, I think, 70% or something, 70, 71%. Um, and um, that's why I thought, like, you know, to avoid this um, competition, I think it makes sense to apply for German taught programs. And that also worked out 
uh, unfortunately, even then I got the rejection from the university, but it worked out after sending out the reconsideration letter and so on. So like that was not a huge dramatic thing. But in any start program, like they just even put a basic requirement. Some universities, for example, the UHH, for international programs, they say that you need to have minimum of 80%. If you don't have 80% score, then it is pointless for you to apply. So those are a few things that you have to think about. Yeah, like, you know, this is not really a nice situation for me. So when that happens, then you start looking for different kind of solutions. Now, what was a different kind of solution? Different kind of solution was, of course, like going for the German thought program, um, writing the road test stuff and didn't have to get the IELTS exam. And so on. the competition is much, much lesser. If I tell you, like, you know, um, how many Indians are actually learning German or are proficient in German in Germany? It's very, very less. I speak to friends, I speak to um, colleagues and turns out like, you know, maybe around 5% of the people living in Germany. And even like that's a very, very good number. Like 5% of the Indians living in Germany would be uh, proficient in German. And 1% of them are going to be fluent in German, like even lesser. So the numbers is ridiculous. That's why the competition is so less, you know? Many people are like, yeah, you know, will I find a job or something, things like that. Look, as an Indian, it's very important for you to know very good English. Indian, Pakistani, Sri Lankan, Bangladesh, whatever, like, you know, Southeast Asian countries. English is important anyways. If you, if your English sucks and your German also sucks, like, then you have a big problem, right? And so many of these Quora posts that you see, you read it, the Reddit posts that you see and so on where people complain about these things, a lot of these things also depend on your individual capabilities. If your language skills are horrible, you cannot present yourself, you cannot give a nice presentation, you cannot um, formulate your thoughts in some kind of meetings and so on, then it becomes a huge issue, right? Of course, then the job chances, the first impression and so on, like all of that really suffer. English start program, you generally write IELTS and you do not have to write IELTS exam. There, there was a provision in the middle where there was like, yeah, uh, it is no longer allowed not to write IELTS. Now that is not the case. So you can write the IELTS exam. There's no German required. Um, and there are like more international like um, environment here. And from international, I mean that it generally is other Southeast Asian countries again, like you have other Indians, Pakistani and so on, like studying in your programs, not really a German studying there, uh, very few. Good job opportunities, requirements on uh, university websites, minimum is 60%, which is um, advised and 50% for private universities. And even for bachelors, I think like if some of you might have the question, okay, how much do I need to have in my bachelors in order to um, study in Germany at all? That is 50%. Do not listen to people who give you random requirements like you know 50 percent 60 percent 80 percent so on that that's ridiculous the reason people do it is because if they can say oh the requirement is 80 percent right like i will not you cannot study in germany if you have below 80 percent then they can easily send you to a private um, university private student collect things like that but it is very important to be completely transparent and honest with people. And I think um, that's why you have to know that the requirement is 50% in your 12th grade for you to be able to study in Germany. And this is the same things that you can see on the APS India website. On the APS India website, you can also find that if you are having a score below 50%, they simply say you're ineligible to study in Germany. So super important to remember this thing. And also if somebody is having some kind of misinformation regarding this, you can let them know. Um, then we have the next thing about um, masters in Germany, um, which is like learning German generally increases your chance. Like not just masters, like I can actually just say, you know, for German. This is like the general regulation that you have to think about. Not even the regulation, but the observation. Doesn't matter if you're coming for bachelor's, doesn't matter if you're coming for masters, doesn't matter if you're coming for your job or MBA, whatever. No? Learning German increases your chances of success in each step of your application. Now, it doesn't matter if it's like admission process, visa process, finding jobs in Germany afterwards because if all Germany is not coming, it doesn't matter if you have to study, but you have to job, so you don't get a job if you have to learn German. So you have to learn German. And the investment investment is this type of thing, that the investment you will do in German, 
देखो मेरे पापा ने मेरे को उस टाइम पर एक बात बोली थी जब मैं जर्मन सीखने लग रहा था और वो ये था कि अगर तेरा एडमिशन नहीं भी हुआ तो इतनी मेहनत करी है तूने तो ये चीज़ तो कभी वेस्ट में जाएगी नहीं ऐसा तो है नहीं कि मतलब तूने इतना टाइम लगाया इसमें तूने इतनी मेहनत करी तूने चीज़ें सीखी और ये सारा का सारा जो है एकदम वेस्ट में चला गया ज़ीरो ऐसा कभी नहीं होता ठीक है तो अगर किसी चीज़ में मेहनत लगाओगे किसी चीज़ में काम करोगे ना और उसमें स्किल डेवलप होगी तो वो चीज़ तुम्हारी ज़िंदगी के साथ हमेशा रहेगी मतलब सारी की सारी ज़िंदगी साथ में रहेगी तो इस चीज़ का ध्यान रखना ठीक है तो इसलिए मतलब जर्मन अगर तुम सीखोगे तो दिस इज़ रियली अ वेरी गुड इन्वेस्टमेंट टाइम एंड मनी वाइज बोथ ठीक है पर कब है ये नाइस इन्वेस्टमेंट इफ यू वांट टू कम टू जर्मनी ठीक है कहीं और देश में जाना होगा ठीक है फिर भी मतलब फॉरेन uh, लैंग्वेजेस हमेशा काफ़ी पॉजिटिव रहती हैं सी में भी अच्छी लगती हैं पर दिस इज स्पेशली बेनिफिशियल कि अगर तुमने इंडिया में रह के किसी जर्मन कंपनी में काम करना है बी एम डब्ल्यू मर्सडीज फॉक्सफॉन ग्रोप बॉश सीमस एंड सोन या फिर मतलब जर्मनी में आके काम करना है ठीक है इन दोनों में मतलब बहुत बढ़िया रहती है और जर्मन के बिना ठीक है ये एक तरीके से तीन ऑब्जर्वेशन का ध्यान रखना है इसका पहली ऑब्जर्वेशन क्या है कि भाई रूल्स ही समझ लो इसको पहला रूल है कि भाई जर्मन सीखोगे तो चांसेस बढ़ेंगे दूसरा रूल है कि जर्मन एक तरीके से सबसे बढ़िया इन्वेस्टमेंट है अगर तुम्हें जर्मनी आना है तो क्योंकि ये एक तरीके से बहुत सारे पाप मिटा देती है और नंबर थ्री क्या है कि विदाउट जर्मन थिंग्स बिकम अ लॉट मोर डिफिकल्ट तो ये तो तुम गांठ मार लो इसकी और जो है बस यूँ समझ लो कि भाई इन रूल्स के हिसाब से चलना है अगर तुम्हें जर्मनी आना है जितना बढ़िया तुम्हारा लेवल होता जाएगा जर्मन में उतनी ही ज़्यादा चीज़ें आसान होती जाएंगी क्योंकि उतनी ज़्यादा तुम एक तरीके से रिक्वायरमेंट्स फुलफिल कर पा रहे हो ठीक है इस चीज़ का ध्यान रखना um, मैं ओके सो देन आफ्टर वर्स वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट वन भाई यही तो दिक्कत है ना अभी नाउ आई स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग इन हिंदी एंड ऑल ऑफ असान इट्स लाइक या खास बिते इंग्लिश प्रेशन या सो मेरे ख्याल से एक सेपरेट इसको स्ट्रीम रखेंगे हिंदी में नाउ एम बी ए राइट लाइक वॉट इज द सिचुएशन विद एम बी ए आई थिंक द फिगर्स आर लिल बिथ थू स्मॉल बिकॉज आई ट्राई टू फिट दिस इन आई थिंक ऑन द स्क्रीन नाउ द एम बी ए स्टोरी इज सुपर इंटरेस्टिंग इन जर्मनी बिकॉज पीपल डू नॉट कंसिडर जर्मनी फॉर अदर थिंग्स अदर दैन एम बी ए अदर दैन इंजीनियर राइट Now, for MBA also, like you have some very, very good figures. So these figures that I pulled out was from the University of Mannheim. So University of Mannheim offers a business course, and in that business course, they wrote what are the stats of this business course, right? Accepted a job offer within three months after graduation. Now, how many people accepted a job offer, or like how many people got a job offer? Ninety-two point five percent. What is the salary? One hundred seven thousand U.S. dollars, so around one hundred seven thousand euros too. Because if you do the euro to not U.S.D. comparison, this is not a lot. So if I do one hundred seven thousand, so yeah, around hundred thousand euros, right? So around hundred thousand euros you make after MBA. Um, how many people with jobs? Things like that. All of these details are uh, mentioned here. So out of the fifty-five graduates. Uh, 40 of them. Uh, there were 40 people who were looking for employment. 37 of them accepted the job offer within three months, and who did not accept were only three people, right? So that's super interesting. Now another thing that you have to take a look at with MBA is because look, MBA is something I would really recommend if you have a lot of work experience, right? If you have a lot of work experience, I think then it makes sense for you to go for an MBA program right away and not. go for the mim program because mim program is generally designed for people who don't have so much work experience look at this one here they are saying that the average work experience is 31 years the average age is 31 years and work experience is 7 years for the people who are applying for management programs so or the mba program in germany mba program is very beneficial in the case that you have a lot of colleagues around you who have a lot of work experience right because they have also worked in different kind of companies for multiple years and from these companies they have connections they have contacts and when you are in the same group like these other people and somebody finds a job or like you want to work with somebody's old company things like that it, finding a job becomes extremely easy in these kind of fields um then when you're doing a standard mim program so this is something that you should really think about that things become easy if you are going for the mba program um okay 
Now the next thing comes about like jobs in Germany, right? Because of course there are many different um, MBA um, universities and things like that. This is not a, a live stream on shortlisting them. Um, that is going to be very individual for every single person. It's super difficult to like just do it for everyone um, in one single stream. But uh, that is something like that can be done also like afterwards. Now, what are the jobs? Uh, job scope in Germany or what are the um, looked out sought out uh, sought after professions in Germany so this is something that you can find from the website uh, this website is called make it in Germany and this is from the federal government uh, what is the federal government the German government right so they mentioned these things here professions in demand uh, professions in demand they mention energy and electrical engineering wind power photovoltaic solar power technology and installation so if you're doing anything in energy and electrical engineering i think like you really have a lot of opportunities in germany mechanical engineering anyways technical equipment installations construction industry so that means like civil engineers and so on uh, automotive industry again mechanical engineers agriculture and farming scientists from the stem fields then you have nurses doctors and craftspeople what are craftspeople craftspeople are essentially like carpenters plumbers and um, people who do not have to go to university to do their jobs right then uh, another thing which is like you know about jobs in germany about is the story with visas right because many people also ask about the blue card so what is the blue card requirement and so on now if you take a look at the blue card requirement um it depends on the annual salary that you will receive. You can apply for blue card if you receive more than 44,000 euros for natural scientists, mathematicians, engineers, doctors, and IT professionals. So this is the STEM field essentially. And doctors, um, or the mint professionals as mentioned, or 46,530 euros for applicants over 45 years of age, and 56,400 euros for all other professions. So if you're an engineer anyway, so you fall into the lowest limit and you can get it very easily. Another thing that many people do not know about is the ICT. ICT is a way in which um, a German company essentially, a, not even a German company, could be an Indian company who has also some kind of subsidiary in Germany or parent company in Germany. So uh, you can send uh, your employees with the part of the, with this ICT program to Germany. You know, you might have heard uh, previously from somebody that, oh yeah, this person went to this and this country from the company. So this from the company's thing is ICT and also very, very uh, interesting thing here. It mentions, can ICT be converted into employment residence permit? Yes, the applicant has the right to change his or her permit of stay. The immigration officer in Germany will check the requirements for the stay of, for the change of purpose of stay and will then issue a new residence permit accordingly. No? So this is also not a dramatic thing. That, that means if your company sends you or if you work in a German company or something and they send you abroad, it is also easy for you uh, in order to find a job and then stay in Germany afterwards. Like if you want to go into that direction, right? Like if you don't want to go and your contract allows that, like it does not need you to come back to India, then this is a great way. And this is also the reason why I say that like learning German is very important. Now, why is learning German important also for blue card holders or people who want to apply for blue card? I will just show you. Right. So um, take a look at this one. Um, if you are essentially having. Um, OK, this is in German. You let me see if I can find you in English. I hope you're able to see this because my screen looks funny and it actually does look funny. OK, so let me zoom out a little bit more. So you can see the entire screen now. I think that should be fine. No, yeah. So if your residence permit uh, has been issued for employment as a qualified skill worker, you may be granted uh, a permanent settlement after four years. So like you can get the PR after four years of working, right? That's the important thing that you have to keep in mind. Now you have a few prerequisites here, no? which are the requirements. What is the requirement now? You have to have four years of a residence permit that you're having the residence permit for four years. For blue card people, it is just 21 months. For people who graduate from a university in Germany, it's just two years, right? And then the most important thing you see here again, sufficient knowledge of German. So what do you understand? Look at this one, right? So what you understand is that in Germany, right? It does not matter if you come for study, if you come for a job, if you come for XYZ, if you don't have 
beyond level of German proficiency, you do not qualify the requirements for getting the permanent residency in Germany at all. Right? There are only a few specific scenarios where like you can get by with A1 or something, but you cannot even fill a form with A1. So what is the point of wasting so much time, especially right now when you're preparing for Germany, B1 takes three months. You do this preparation for three months and you have no headaches whatsoever when you're applying for the permanent residency, because once you go to Germany, you will not have the time. Once you go to Germany, you will get super busy. So you can see right here and like no criminal records and things like that. This is something that you can um, already imagine. So don't have criminal records, please. Now um, you go to the next one, which is uh, the age restrictions, right? Because the next question could be about people who think, okay, I'm a little bit older. Should I go for jobs in Germany? The age restriction in Germany is around like 45 years. Like it's not even a restriction, but they say that after the age of 45 years, we need to know that you have a pension at the age of 67 with a monthly income of like 1,208 uh, euros for at least 12 years no? uh, or assets or assets totaling uh, 187,682.99 euros. This is all details you can uh, very transparently see on the German embassy website. Of course, I have searched these for you and I have put this together for you so that it is not a huge problem for you to like, you know, research these things. But if you want to also like do it yourself or check yourself, you can uh, definitely check it. After 45, you have to be exceptionally, uh, exceptional, exceptional, uh, generally to be able to both uh, get the visa and get a job in Germany, right? Because uh, if you're not very, very good at what you do, like above 45 years of age, they just think like, you know, we don't really have too much um, mileage that we can get out of this person. And German language is anyways, like super important because uh, take a look at the next scenario, because I also previously told you there were a few visa rejections and visa rejections are even more probable when you cannot really show them that you were dedicatedly applying for Germany or you were only planning for Germany. The best way to show it is by showing the uh, foreign language. If you want to apply for Canada, show French, France, show French, Germany, show German, uh, Denmark, show Danish and so on. Like, you know, if you were showing that you were always preparing for this particular moment to get this visa and so on, so that you're able to go there and study, that's very, very good that reduces your chances of visa rejection massively. So if you want to do any kind of investment whatsoever, I can really recommend that like learning German is something that everybody can do. It does not need a lot of time every single day. You just need to put a few hours aside every single day and you know, things um, pan out, like you get good results from it. Now we go to the next one, which is uh, the types of a visa that you end up getting, right? So there are different kind of categories that they put the employment research inside. And for the people who are coming for employment, essentially for them, there are a few interesting ones, right? So you have first one, first one, the job seeker visa. So job seeker visa, you don't have an employment right now, but you, again, job seeker visa, people get so many times rejections because they just think, yeah, they will apply for the visa and like there is no competition whatsoever and I will get the visa not without any kind of problems. And then I will go to Germany and I will find a job doesn't work like that. When you're applying for the job seeker visa, you have to document what kind of companies you have applied to and you have to get the list ready. You have to also submit the responses if some of those companies were calling you for an interview at all. So that is extremely important that you have to uh, think about. Then you have the self-employment is not really relevant for you. Then you have the skilled workers um, that you can take a look at and also the employment. Uh, visa that you can take a look at like this is also for the foreign professional qualifications what is this this is for nurses and doctors right so you have the employment visa you have the job seeker visa and then you have a further category of blue card blue card is a for like a subcategory of the employment visa no? and is it doable because like many people ask about these things now so students have been writing that uh, somebody had like somebody completed their BTEC in six years, they had 10 backlogs, and they still got offers from TU Darmstadt and so on. So I think like this is really, really nice. Um, people who just say like, you know, just because you have backlogs or just because you don't have good grades, look at this one from the bottom, Ashish Yadav. And he says like a BE Mechanical 7.1, CGPA IL 6.0, German A2, 
uh, two research papers, two internships, six months of work experience, and he got inside some very good universities like Fort Wang and Smart Systems Engineering and so on. And this is from um, SRH. But then also he got the admission from, but he was like, you know, it's a private university, I don't know. He got 12 rejections, but then like he also got um, acceptance letters. So making the applications properly is very important. Then we had one more from Manit and he was saying like he received five admits and from TU Klausthal, Nordhausen, Duisburg, Essen, uh, Degendorf Institute of Technology. And here the profile was also like 7.48 CGPA, A1 German certificate while applying uh, and no work experience, right? So you can see a common pattern that is like people who are learning German for them, even with lower scores, things become uh, much better. And of course, it is an investment of money and it is an investment of time, right? But what is the other option, right? The other option is just to have a very shitty application phase and just get frustrated all of the time because you're getting like rejections here and there. That is not nice. You know, like this is not something that you would want to have. The main intakes for studying is from 15th January, um, like 15th January, the application ends for 1st April. This is summer intake and for winter intake, the application ends on 15 July and the semester starts on 1st October. And you generally take two to three years for uh, studying masters. I spent my masters in two years, um, but there are also people who took, take three years, four years and so on. Maximum you can take is twice the time of the regular student side which is two times two years or two times three years for bachelors. So four years you can take maximum for masters, six years you can take maximum for bachelors. Now, how can I help you? Because of course you might be asking this question too. So on Big Academy, we have the uh, different kind of courses and the entire Big Academy is just made so that we are able to solve different kind of pain points that you can have in your journey for applying to Germany, right? So um, for the complete course for studying in Germany, we call it CCSG. Uh, you have support from application till your master's ends in Germany. You have um, bi-weekly live sessions in the uh, BIJ enrolled students group. Then you have email support. So we are always, you can always reach out to us. Like directly, there's a completely separate email that the students get who are enrolled and they can send us their documents, they can send us their questions and we respond to them. Um, and you have a completely uh, exclusive group for students who are enrolled in this course. So people who are generally already invested, you know, they have invested their money, they have invested their time. So these are generally like more um, motivated and more driven students that you find in this group than in other groups. Then um, with this, like, you know, when you have all of the information in one single place, then you can also very easily find time for more, more things that is like learning German and so on. So this is something that you can uh, read about with the link given in the description for complete course for studying in Germany, the same with complete course for finding jobs in Germany. So here we cover all of the details on how do you find jobs in Germany and how do you get the attention of the recruiter within the first two seconds, a strong email cover letter and CV strategy, because the European CVs that you have to make are also different than what you see in India. Uh, and you have different kind of formats here, different kind of modes. So like, there's a do it yourself mode that you can use. There's a done with you mode. So where like you do most of the things, but you're sending us things for reviews, qu asking questions and things like that. And done for you is like, you know, we completely take over the process and we do things for you. And like we, you do not have too much burden. And then you have like completely free time for doing things by yourself. You can read about both of these modes on the course pages, right? So what is the done for you mode where we do things for you? And what are the done with you modes? So where we do things together and what is the do it yourself? I think do it yourself does not need a lot of explanation, right? Now, these are the things for making applications for studies in Germany, for universities and making application for jobs in Germany. But I we cannot uh, do for you learning German, right? So German is something that you have to do it yourself. That's extremely important. Like the time that you spend in learning German is extremely important. Like nobody can just take the information, like just put inside your brain and all of a sudden from one day to the next, now you're fluent in German. That doesn't work. So this is the reason like we made sure that we try to make a course, which is the simplest course possible, which like, you know, has a specific goal. So that's why we decided that we are going to build together the faster German courses. Like that's my wife, Alina, and we built these courses together. Uh, the first one is the bundle of like A1 to B1. Like this is what most of the people generally choose because I showed you that 
um, even when you take a look at the settlement requirements, the permanent residency requirements in Germany, you will not get um, anywhere without the B1 level proficiency. This is something that you have to do anyways. So I would rather recommend that you do it from the comfort of your home because these are essentially like, you know, um, lessons that we have put together as a bundle and you can essentially just log in and you can watch the lessons anytime you want. So this is completely from home. You don't have to waste time in commuting to different kind of places or spend long hours where like other people are asking their questions and you're thinking, ah, like, you know, this question is not so dramatic because you could have already found about found the answer to this question if you would have just done a little bit more research because there are different kinds of students, right? There are some students who do a lot of studies and then they have smarter questions to ask. And then you have students who don't do a lot of studies and they don't have good questions to ask. So this is the main bundle that most of the students take. The second bundle is the bundle like where people are actually like super motivated and they're like, yeah, we want to uh, push to B2 completely. That bundle is also available online. So these are completely do-it-yourself courses and um, you have access to uh, them for a lifetime. So once you pay for the courses, there is no subscription mo mode, anything like that. There is no monthly payments, just one-time payment. You have lifetime access. And that is something that separates us from everybody else. Um, the support in general that I provide at Big Academy and my team provides is like more complete. So we do not leave you in one of the stages of your application. We just make sure that you are there with us, like, you know, till the time you get successful. And then you're also able to send us a nice testimonial telling about your journey and so on. I hope that was helpful. I think like all of the things that I've covered here um were something that you can get started with now we have around 15 minutes for asking your questions and even if it goes a little bit longer like i don't mind i just want to make sure that you have your questions answered right for this now i'm going to go to the screen and when i go to the screen uh you should be able to see the chat uh, just a second i have to change the screen for that give me a moment Hmm. Yeah, my OBS is uh, playing really, really funny. So I'm not able to see the chat in a separate window. So I'm going to do something so that you guys can see what I am seeing right now. This should be that exactly. So I'm going to also position it a little bit so you can see what is going on on this side. Yeah, perfect. All right, give me a minute. Okay, so um, I will now start. Uh, so okay, when should I buy the big academy course? Just a second. When should I buy Big Academy course for studying in Germany for next week? So the thing with the course is like you have lifetime access to that, right? So it does not really matter when you purchase the course. Like the sooner you um, enroll in it, the longer you're able to essentially make something out of it because you're seeing more live sessions, you're speaking to other students and so on. And it becomes uh, very easy for you when the actual time starts. Like just the preparation is then not so intense all of a sudden, right? Um, hello, I've already enrolled into BIG for all four levels. I would uh, appreciate if you uh, also provide certain tips for practicing German. Yes. So I think like these are um, anyways in the very first module, like I show you what the course contains. And in the second module, I talk about what are the next things that you can do to practice things. There are audios. Um, like there are radio websites that I talk about. There are websites where you can read things. Like this is the same thing for A1, A2, B1, B2. Like just the uh, difficulty of those things keep on increasing from level to level. 
So that is something that you can take a look at. Then we have the next one, which is, uh, hi Bharat, this is Sachin from Bangalore. I'm a product designer. So my question is what the chances of getting job as a fresher with one year of work experiences. So Sachin, um, it, it, it is extremely important, like difficult to say things like that uh, because the issue comes So the next thing comes is, yeah, the thing with this is um, as a fresher with one year of work experience in Germany, important is to know what is your um, work experience in what field, what kind of German proficiency do you have and how good you are also like in um, speaking about things, right? So how good you are in the interviews and so on. Um, so all of these things essentially put things together. There's also going to be the opportunity card getting launched in Germany recently. So when the opportunity card gets launched, of course, things are going to be then even more simpler. So that's going to be nice. Um, what else do we have here? Um, hey, Bart, I took a gap year. To learn German to D1, I studied A1 to A2 at the coaching institute and for B1, I bought your course. Can I show this gap um, here in my CV as intensive German language training? Absolutely. So this is extremely important for you to um, remember that like in CV, lying, thing, lying about things is not a great idea. When you're lying about, when you lie about things and they find out later on, um, like essentially everything can, can get cancelled. There were cases where you lied in the university application, the university find out about this 12 years later they revoke the master thesis that master degree that they provided to you these kind of things happen so if you were learning german and you had a year of gap for that that is not a problem at all that that can be separately mentioned in the cv so you can also mention it directly in the study section itself hello i'm 37 i want to know uh, can I come to Germany as an opportunity card holder? I'm currently at A1 level, haven't given the test. So of course, like with the opportunity uh, card, when it gets launched, like the thing is, it, it is still not completely there. If you go to the um, German embassy websites and so on, like you will not find a PDF list for that. So like this is like still getting rolled out. And when it's completely out, you will have like more details about what are the requirements and so on. And age for age wise, it's not going to be so nice because like they have another benchmark with like 35 not benchmark but like a, a level at 35 so maybe there it reduces a little bit but the more uh, german proficiency you have the better the points get and how many years of work experience you have that also improves the points so these are the things that you have to keep in mind uh i have already enrolled in your big course or do i need to buy the german language course separately and give 12 exam can I go to Germany this year itself? So this year itself, um, you can go for student colleague, right? Because if you think about when your DMC comes, let's say the DMC comes somewhere around like end of May, and then you have to apply for the APS, which around, which again takes like one, one and a half months or something. Um, it kind of reaches July, right? And in July, you cannot apply to universities anyways, even if you have cleared the JE exam because the application portals are closed then. So then you can apply for the student colleague that takes around one year, of course. But like, if you want to go to student colleague, then of course it, it is possible this year itself. Um, do you take in commerce students as well from finance background? Yes, got them. So if you go to the course page on academy at uh, this academy .com, you will find many testimonials and these are from students who are from management and also from the commerce background. We also have like full blown details about like what was the score, how much work experience they had and so on and in what universities they got inside. So this is something we collect every year 
uh, and around 640 students, uh, the data we have for them. Can I get conditional? Just a second. It gets skipped really, really quickly. Please tell me something about PhD. The thing is like in, in the last seven years or almost eight years now of me um, helping students out with all of these things, PhD people like who essentially start the process was only one. So I have kind of like skipped completely like speaking about it because uh, people who are applying for the PhD stories, they can generally like, you know, do the things themselves. Like that is a very individual process. If you take about, if you take a look at the, structured PhD programs and the individual PhD programs. So all of that you should be able to find on this website called researchingerman.com. Um, hi Bharat, adding a good GRE score to my CV will be a good strategy to strengthen, strengthen my overall possibility. Um, absolutely Yogesh. So there are some universities if they mention that GRE is recommended or if they mention that you should give the GRE score then if you don't give it like you could be pretty much sure that you will not be considered in the pool itself right if you write the gre exam now you already become very very different than most of the other people who do not write the gre exam when they want to come to germany gre is actually becoming a standard requirement for like most of the programs which have a lot of competition so if this is something that you want to do if you um can do the GRE, I would really recommend this too. Like, I think this also goes for everybody who wants to come for masters. If you can do GRE, like definitely uh, can recommend this. Can we convert language visa 16F to 16D? If you're talking about converting the language visa to a national visa or student applicant visa, this is not uh, possible because language visa and tourist visas are non-convertible visas you cannot extend them into national visas when you are living in Germany. You have to go back and you have to apply for a new visa. Any idea how long new citizenship application could take? It depends from like city to city. Um, my application took around six months. Um, I've heard people whose applications took around eight months, but also at the same time, who's just took like three months or something. So this goes completely different from city to city. Uh, where to find part-time jobs in Germany? Well, there's a video on YouTube for that that we made. You can take a look at that too. Um, how long does it take to learn German? And what's the optimal daily routine for effective learning? Right. That is a very, very good question. And if I could show you so faster German A1, because I discuss about all of these things uh, in the course, because this is a very important part of how to um, learn German in general. Let me just make the screen a little bit more organized so you can see everything. Right, so when you go here to the course page, we essentially see in the first module like how much German you need to know to be a specific level. And then also like what kind of uh, websites you're supposed to uh, use and things like that. We also have scores, all of these things. Now, important to know is that if you're spending, if you want to like cover the A1 course in 14 days, I would really recommend to have around 14, um, around eight hours per day. Well, if you can do eight hours, then six hours per day, but a total of around like 30 hours per week or something is um, extremely important because if you do less than that, then like in two weeks, you cannot do much, right? So my uh, recommendation would be 40 hours, like 40 hours is full-time work, right? So you can do like six hours um, every single day, or you can do four hours every single day from Monday to Friday. So four hours every single day is two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, huh? 20 hours you're covered there. And then 10, 10 hours on the weekend. This is how you cover the A1 in 14 days. Now, important thing to remember is like covering A1 in 14 days does not mean you're like completely fluent in German because some people make these like absolutely stupid remarks and they're saying like, yeah, you know, like it is not possible that you become uh, fluent in German in 14 days. Nobody's saying that. Like you will not get fluent in German in 14 days. For myself, it also took around like almost one and a half years or something, two years 
uh, to get fluent in German. But you're able to clear the levels in that time. B2 level I also cleared at the time when my German was my German was still very broken. So five months I was able to clear the B2 exam. But I'm not saying I was fluent in German at that time itself. I think it took me around one and a half years, like around one year of university study to get fluent in German. So that is something that um, you should keep in mind. Next question, let's take a look. Um, how to study in German public university via JE main and advance that to English course, right? So like I mentioned, if you are clearing the JE mains, um, I think, yeah, the JE mains, if you're clearing, then you are able to make a comp make a direct application um, to Germany. So can you please explain the process of getting a certificate in German language, like after learning German from any institution, how to get certificate? Siddharth VP is asking. I live in Bangalore. So I think this is very easy. If you are um, living in these major cities, what you do is, Siddharth, you go to um, the Goethe Institute website. So Goethe Institute, I can write in the chat, Goethe Institute, so you know how exactly it's spelled. When you go to this website, you can see the different kind of centers and you have to write the exam there as an external candidate, important. There's an internal candidate. Internal candidates are people who are already taking the language courses there. And then you have external candidates who are applying for the exam as outside candidates. So when you do that, then you can apply for the exam and you can um, get the score. Um, get the score and then afterwards, like, you know, you clear, you don't clear. Uh, clearing is, I think, at 60% or something. Um, if you get 60%, like, then you are clearing that particular stage. Um, I'm just saying, bro, I'm trying to get a job in Germany and Austria, but getting same type of rejection means what should I do? I'm a SAP consultant. If you guys want to speak uh, to me about these kind of things, because the thing is, like, it's extremely like uh, it's ridiculous for me to now give an advice like this like knowing so little about like what the situation is right now so if like that is something uh, which you are in the situation in so you can also think about um, sitting down with me separately and like speak about these things i offer this is my calendar on calendly.com slash bharat in germany and there you can find different kind of things you can like see the calendar and you can um, book the call there because this is the only way i could think about uh, giving you some kind of like custom advice like this like seeing what are the reason of the rejections how are the emails things like that i cannot tell you that A german like i told you told most of you people i think if you are essentially um doing german courses that's going to be very very good discount for studying Germany. We we don't really have any kind of discounts on going to be. We had for a very long time, uh, but unfortunately like that was not something that we were very happy about because costs have risen everywhere. And this is the same reason like we cannot offer the things at the same prices that we were like offering previously. So this is something which you can see everywhere actually around you. Can you use v universities VPD from summer semester for the upcoming winter semester of the same university? VPDs are valid for one year. So uh, one year and this generally goes around for three intakes. So yes, you can do that. Is 1.5 year or three semester masters recognized in Germany? I don't know about it. I think like to find out more details about this, I have to take a look at the Anabin website. So that is going to take some time to actually make sure if it is recognized or not. Can you please clarify if IELTS is necessary or if I have my degree till bachelor's in English, they will, then will it count in place of IELTS as English proof, English proficiency proof. So both things already, there are universities which mention that a language of instruction, this medium of instruction certificate is fine, which is that you studied in English. That certificate from the university is fine and we can give you the admission on the basis of that. Then there are many, many universities which say that this is not something that we accept and you have to provide an IELTS exam. I would say around like 40% of the universities accept medium of instruction, 60% of the universities accept IELTS 
Well, 100% of the universities accept IELTS, 40% accept medium of instruction. Okay. Okay, guys. So I think these are um, all over the place. If there is something left, what I would really recommend you to do is like send me an email. So you can send an email at partonbartongermany.com or you can uh, think about um, booking the call so that we can speak about it. Like I said previously, I think if you're really thinking about doing something about your German proficiency, like I can really recommend these things and we have like complete bundles. So you have A1 plus A2, A1 plus A2 plus B1 and you also have the uh, A1 to B2 bundles here. So you can like go through them and you can check the prices and enroll in them because now it is weekend, you have time to get started. I mean, it is much better to start doing something in the direction you want to go inside then now spend an evening watching some unnecessary things on YouTube, on Netflix, things like that. Do something which brings you further, right? If something is left, you will find all of the links for different kind of things in the description itself. Thank you so much for coming, joining in.